All the doorposts in our house are probably chestnut, but in the past someone's tacked on these rather lovely pink. Um, we think they're probably sort of pitch pine or something like that. Pink uh, door surrounds. So, and uh, because they're pine, uh, they're rather riddled in woodworm and uh, they've been painted in lead paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to the barn and I'm going to see what I can find. We know in the barn there's a stack of red wood of some description and uh, the postman's just delivered me um, a laser measuring tool for me to trial. So I'm going to go see what I can find. The lovely people at Incoma Tools have sent me a bilateral laser distance meter it's a sort of laser and measure tool and it comes with an instruction manual and a pouch for your belt or something but i'm just going to go out to the barn and measure some stuff it does come with an instruction manual but it's only got a couple of buttons and it's pretty intuitive so i don't think i'm going to use a manual when we bought the house it came with this abandoned uh, hay barn if you like now upstairs is pretty difficult to get into and the guy we bought it off said it had been abandoned upstairs since he'd been a kid and he's uh, well approaching 60 now so yeah no one's been up there for many decades the problem we've got is all of these wooden beams are absolutely rotten they are full of woodworm and the planks which is forming the floor you can literally reach up and pull chunks off of them there's some very cool stuff up here like here's a butter churn and uh, that's a brace for going around a horse's neck and uh, this thing here is part of a horse cart and I think that's the rest of the horse cart underneath there and uh, I'm going to walk along the line of the wall because um, as I pointed out downstairs the floorboards are too weak for me to be up, be up here and um, over there is probably a pre-war motorbike and uh, yeah, there's the rest of the uh, the horse cart, and underneath that, I think that's a some kind of sprayer or something. No, oh, I don't want to. Oh, oh, she spotted me. Yeah, but uh, there are a couple of push bikes, and uh, they're really cool. And uh, I'm going to walk over here. Now that is probably some kind of organ or very small upright piano. And uh, that is a child's pram and a grinding wheel. And uh, bits of tractor or something like that and some little baskets. Now some other cool stuff. There's a newspaper from 2004. And uh, old tractor tyre, lots of wooden fruit crates, some chimney brushes. Now that's the pile of wood that I've come up here to rummage through. Big bit of oak. And as you can see, there's lots of damage to the roof and some of it's actually started to rot and split there. So yeah, it's part of a old coat rack. A wood saw, bow saw I think they're called. Um, that's an old hose pipe I think. So yeah, I'm going to be in trouble when I get down. The wife has spotted me. Yeah. So this is a wood pile I've got to come up here and sort through. Yeah, fruit baskets. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it's lots of cool stuff for us to sort through one day. But yeah, what I've come up here to actually test is um this measuring tool. And it's a bilateral, 
bilateral so um I don't have to actually uh clear all of this pile of junk and actually stand with my back against the wall. I can actually point like um the red dot is actually on that wall over there. I can uh point it at both walls at one time and uh, stand in the middle. So if I uh do that much well I've got to get it level. There we go. I'll read it to you. It's 3.12 metres to one wall, 5.437 metres to the other wall, and it's a total of 8.685 metres wide. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't normally be able to do, do that, because I'd literally have to clear all the junk out of there and uh, repair all the floorboards for me to be able to do that. So um, yeah, it's a very handy piece of kit and I can you know uh, so if I wanted to centralize a chandelier or anything like that um, you can uh, do lots of things you can measure the cubage of a room you can measure the square meterage of a room you could um say if you wanted to uh, measure these um, uh, beams here uh, which is the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle if you were really into your mass you could you could calculate those so um yeah you can do lots of cool stuff with this thing so yeah it's got plenty of jobs but um i just wanted to play with my uh my new new tour and trial it out for them but yeah it's a cool bit of kit and i wanted to wanted to play in my barn really but i got caught by the wife didn't i i'm just going to measure this room i know it's three meters 82 wide so I'm just going to see how accurate it is. 3 metres, 819 wide. Oh, I'll let it off. <laughs> 0.01 of a millimetre out. Well, considering we were using a tape measure, it's probably yeah, more um, accurate. That's fairly accurate, don't you mean? <laughs> I think so. I'll let it off. <laughs> the idea is we're going to drill a hole up through here and then we're going to poke some cable ties up through and that will give us an idea of where the joist is and then we're going to saw along the joist and cut these floorboards out because these are all probably tongued and grooved together and uh, at the edge they're all rotten and the front of the house all bowed out and the floorboards don't meet the front of the house anymore so uh and also over the years sort of Various critters have got in, like pine martins, and they've chewed the edge of the board. So uh, they definitely don't meet the front of the house anymore now, do they? So yeah, so we got to start drilling, drilling through like so. And if we get some cable ties. We're going to poke them through the holes. If I can find the hole I just drilled, like so. There's little flag markers. And uh, hopefully when we go up into the loft, we'll be able to spy that. Now these beams uh, either split or they're cut by an axe, so uh, we can't exactly cut a straight line, so if we were to just put a straight edge along them, we'd miss the beam, so I'm going to put several markers along just to be safe. So we've put our markers up through, and now we've put a batten down, and we're drawing a line an inch away from our markers with a well the straightest piece of wood we can find in France which is a bit of a rare thing because you know as soon as you get them out of the shop they've warped but yeah that's the plan can't cut too, too close to that one unfortunately because the Saw stops and there's a baked bean tank in there. This is one of the um, 
the vermin um, hole cover uppers that they used to use as long as as well as slate I've just picked up two bits of slate off the floor over here and I've been left with a couple of lovely holes I don't know if you can make that out the size of them God knows what was hiding in there Point Martin Hopefully they've vacated <laughs> There's no um no evidence of um, recent activity around here and we've not heard anything in the night so um, hopefully they've vacated but yeah there's a, another tin can covering a hole up another one there if you can just make it out so anyhow let's get back to cutting what I did was I, I set the depth of the uh the saw the same depth as the uh, the board so we're hopefully not cutting into the uh, lovely chestnut beams that's the theory I suppose if we do cut in it's only going to be by a couple Mill of mil anyway isn't yeah. it so yeah carry on unfortunately there's lots of nails in here and they've whacked them in quite deep so you can't actually see the heads so I'm probably going to clip the heads of a few of them so there might be a few sparks so uh, yeah carry on She's going for it, folks. Don't want to come out. No. Crowbar, I think. Ah. Crowbar. Crowbar. <laughs> no messing now, eh? <laughs> now you're stumped. No, try and bash bash it in at the edge there. Get the slim one and bash it that in. One. A, yeah. They're definitely rotten, aren't they? Yeah. Rotten, but they're only not. Yeah. One up, first one's up. Oh, we have daylight. That looks like it's pine. Yeah, it does like pitch pine or something. That's yeah. not chestnut like the floorboards downstairs. Yeah. That's like the hallway downstairs, isn't it? Yeah, the landing. Landing. That's not like the bedroom. No. Which might be why it's rotted in the bedroom, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so they've... Wow, the whole floor's moving. <laughs> so they, they've used, like, chestnut for the bedrooms and then for the loft and the uh, landing, they've used 
pine. So we got where to cut on the beams, spot on. Yeah. So that's good. Smack bang in the middle. Yeah. Oh, the other crowbar is slightly better for that. Just swept that floor downstairs. <laughs> Absolutely sweeping it again, my love. Uh, you blame me for creating a mess. <laughs> Got the depth right on the saw as well, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's not cut into the into the beam at all. Yeah. It's just left a, a fraction of the. Uh, yeah. The wood on there. I think that's because the um, each one of these is slightly bowed, so when it cut, yeah, it won't quite cut in deep enough because it was each one slightly bowed. I'm gonna come that way into the corner, I think. Yeah. So we cut these boards and we cut them a centimetre or two over size and the plan was that they just go in here and then we mark them and we trim them to size. So that should sit under there and then we get a pen just so happen because each one, because the wall is basically distorted and uh, bowed at the front uh, each one's going to be a slightly different size so uh, what I'll do is I'll plonk it up against the wall and I'll mark it about there and I'll mark it about there and we take it downstairs and we trim it to size and knock it in that's the plan and then uh, we'll probably put a batten or something on the wall when we're finished to hold them all up. We in? We're in. Alright, I suppose best to get some screws. Yes. What size would you like? Uh they can be quite long really can't they? So uh fifty? Four by fifty or something, yeah. Okay, I'm on the way. screwing yay okay. cut that to size mind your head mind your head so I've just been to a friend's house to water her plants because she's away I've come back and he's Putting the last plank in now. Yeah. Let's go bash it in. 
Yeah. Two screws short. Really hot up here. It's got to be in the 40s, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's oh, too hot up here. The beauty of having uh, tight slate tiles, it gets very, oh. very hot. Yeah, hot and bothered. We've put the insulation that side of the room, and now. We've finished the floorboards here, so I just need to add the insulation for these last three. Take six. 192. <laughs> Take ten. <laughs> Yay, almost. In between all the beams is plasterboard now. I let Mandy finish up in here because it was a bit hard on my shoulder, shoulder injury. So yeah, we just got a do a bit of uh, filler in in between the uh, plaster boards, and uh, Maddie is triumphant at last. That was hard work. <laughs> it was hard work. There was a lot of swearing, a yeah. lot of sweating, a lot of cutting, and fiddling and fettling with the boards, especially the ones at the edges. Yeah. Because um, basically, all these beams are cut with an axe or something like that, so they might be, say, I don't know. 50 centimetres apart at one end and say 39 centimetres apart yeah. at the other end but there'd be every different measurement in between yeah. so yeah, yeah, yeah. That, was, that was hard going that yeah well, you... I'm glad it's over and it looks a heck better yeah it really does makes it I think um, so I've got the joint and tape tape and joint joint and tape I'll yeah. put the tape up and plaster yeah. Um, clean all the beams and then oil them. They were cleaned before, but we've made a mess of them again. Yeah. But if you have a look at the beams at the back, the colour of those. Yeah. Um, absolutely gorgeous. So if I can get half of the others looking half decent like that, and they'll be fantastic. Um, we did find some wood out in the barn for this, doing the door frame, but it was cherry wood and mahogany. Uh, or no, not cherry, walnut. Yeah. So our excursion to the barn was a little bit fruitless. It's rather do, too good a quality of wood to use for a door frame. So yeah, I think um, walnut and cherry door frames is a little bit excessive. Well, if, if, if we've got the wood there and it's free, then I think yeah. it's... Because if we're going to paint it, then it makes no odds. Yeah, I think we'll probably get some pine and stain it or something. Mm, possibly. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's ceiling... Joint and tape, beams to clean and oil, and then the next big thing will be the floor. Yeah, this this floor keeps getting repeatedly dusty. So um, what we're going to probably do is get some bicarbonate of soda and uh, bleach and, and scrub, scrub steam and scrub maybe. Yeah. So and then after that, once it's dry, then we can um, oil it or. Yeah, tea oil and... Yeah, something like that. Most, we're going to try and find the biggest rug we can possibly find, uh, Brocant or whatever. We saw some the other day and... Um, they, they were a little bit expensive, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, they were uh, straight from the uh, tapisserie or whatever they call it, wherever they make them. And they were... Well, they, they were probably... Um, four figures. <laughs> yeah, they were four figures. They were very handmade. They were very good oh, quality. Gorgeous. Gorgeous quality. Uh, a little bit out of our budget. <laughs> yeah. I think someone has spent several, probably thousands of, hundreds of hours making them. But, yeah. They yeah you were... could see the tapestry on the back where they'd actually done it by hand, I think. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. We'll not yeah. have those. We'll not have those ones. Yeah. Those particular ones. Yeah. So, yeah. And once we've done everything, then we can start looking for the furniture here and yeah. dressing the room. And that's going to be... An amazing bit because that's the room finished then yeah so we're getting there it's, it's a slow slog 
Um, little things like, like I say, the beams. Ugh. But it's all done. Yeah. Which is brilliant. And I think it'll be fantastic. Yeah. So, I've got my taping joints. Or whatever it's called, that tape stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, that's my next job. Cup of tea first. Yeah. And as usual, folks, give us a bit of like and subscribe. We do. We like a bit of that. And uh, links in the description for the uh, laser measuring tool. Oh, yeah. And, that uh, was good. Yeah. That, that saved a lot of time and effort with the, the ceiling as well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And um, au revoir. Au revoir. See and you next time. See you next time.